Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be reviewing both the F-89B and F-89D Scorpion premium fighters slash interceptors for the American Air Tech Tree. I'll review both variants in this video because aside from armament and weight differences, these are largely the same plane, and I don't want to waste your time with two separate videos. I'll go over their stats, the differences between the two variants, their roles, their strengths and weaknesses, and I'll give a final recommendation as to whether or not you should purchase one or both of these planes. This said, if you'd like more content, whether it's guides, reviews, or whatever, please hit that subscribe button as it helps support my channel more than anything else. Thank you. That all said, let's get into it. So to start, the F-89B says a 7.3 slash 7.7 BR, depending on if you play arcade or realistic, and costs 7,540 GE. The F-89D has the same exact BR as an arcade and realistic, and costs 3,770 GE, and is only purchasable if you purchase the F-89B first. This said, let's go over the stats, and I'll start off with the F-89B stats first, and then go over the stats of the D variant. The stats are where the major differences lie between these two planes. So for the F-89B, it has a 1,011 km per hour top speed, a 28 second turn time, 49.4 meter per second rate of climb, 6 20 millimeter cannons that fire a burst mass of 15.15 kilograms per second, and it has two afterburner capable engines that have a total of 5,820 kilograms of force. The F-89D has a 1,022 km per hour top speed. 33 second turn time, 38.9 meter per second rate of climb, 104 air to air or air to ground rockets, and two afterburner capable engines that have a total of 6,100 kilograms of force between the two of them. And now for the differences between the F-89 variants. The F-89B is lighter, weighing about 1,000 kilograms less than the D variant. The D also has heavier wingtips, owing to the large amount of rockets stored in them. As a result of this additional weight, despite having stronger engines, the D variant is slower to accelerate, turn, and climb, but still has a marginally higher top speed than the B model. And also the most obvious difference comes from the armament with the B having six rapid-fire 20mm cannons and the D having air-to-air -air rockets or air-to-ground rockets if you so choose. Now with the basics out of the way, let's get into the rolls. So both these planes, but more so the B variant, are not only capable of intercepting, but excel in doing so. These planes are, for the B, are some of the best interceptors in-game. I easily caught up to an Arado 234 C3 that was flying at around 11,000 meters, while I started at hardly half that height was running low on fuel, and was around 20 kilometers away from him myself. I tossed on the afterburners and caught up, only to finally run out of fuel and ammo, but not without getting a critical hit on him, which then forced him out of the clouds. This plane is a miracle in terms of its intercepting capabilities, and with it, whether you choose to fly the B or D variant, no enemy plane is safe. You can, unless in a major up tier, outclimb, outrun, and outdamage nearly every plane out there. In my opinion, the F-89B is a bit easier to use in this role, and in general, due to the weight and armament differences, but both can be more than competent at doing so. The F-89s are not without their faults, however, as they are absolutely huge planes with somewhat limited agility, which makes them easy prey for nimble fighters, such as MiGs, in a dogfight. Granted, they can stay on the F-89 tail in the first place. Additionally, if you die from a substantial height, you need to be prepared to use your air brakes. These are absolutely crucial to the survival of your plane so that you do not either lose control or shear off your wings. This aside, you can also engage against ground targets with both, although with limited success. While the F-89D has options to mount 104 anti-armor Mighty Mouse rockets with nearly 300 millimeters of armor pen at max, they are a bit awkward to aim against ground targets, due to the fact that they sit far away from each other on the wingtips of this plane. This makes the convergence of rockets nearly impossible. It also takes it away from being its primary role that makes it amazing against planes, especially bombers, being that you can either equip anti-air or anti-ground rockets, but not a combination of the two. Don't get me wrong, if you're good at aiming and you do not mind that half your rockets are likely to always miss, you can get really good at close air support with this plane. It just isn't likely, nor will it be easy. On the other hand, the F-89B has great cannons with decent armor pen for their BR against ground, maxing out around 53mm of armor pen. While this will allow you to make short work of most lightly armored vehicles, it's pointless to use against anything above light tanks. 
While useful, it isn't amazing and, like the F-89D in the close air support role, takes away from its true purpose of intercepting enemy planes. Finally, in a role somewhat similar to intercepting, the F-89s can dogfight to a point but are mainly suited to boom and zoom roles, which they fill just as well as they fill the intercepting role. Just climb up high and swoop down when you see a potential target. The afterburners and ludicrous weaponry make them very easy and if you miss, just fly away like nothing happened and you will likely be able to outrun your unclaimed prey. In the intercepting role and using boom and zoom tactics, I routinely get between first and third place in matches with little effort. The armament of these planes, despite their odd controls, makes them very easy in which to be successful. And now with all that out of the way, let's get into the strengths and weaknesses, and I'll start off with the strengths first. So they both have very high rates of climb for their BR, which is largely assisted by their afterburners, with the F-89B being even substantially better than the F-89D, which itself is already really good. They both have very, very high speeds, which can make it a little bit difficult, but I'll get into that later. They both have air brakes, of which are crucial due to the high speed and high dive rate of both of these planes. You will need those air brakes, as even just flying on a flat plane will make it very, very easy to hit your top speed. They have ridiculously powerful armaments on both the B and D models, although with extremely different characteristics with each. When combined with its great rate of climb, the F-89 becomes an excellent interceptor, which is equivalent to what its real-life role was. They both have tons of ammo on both variants. If you're accurate and stay alive, you could take out 5 or 6 enemies in a match in RB without flying back to base. Now, for the aforementioned reasons, along with its cannon placement on the B model and damage potential of the D model, this is easily one of the most potent planes in-game when conducting a head-on. It is absolutely devastating and will come out on top the majority of the time, so long as you know how to head-on. It is so good, in fact, that this is one of the primary strategies of the F-89 in any given match, and regardless of the variant. They both also have decent BR placements, which oftentimes you will be in a down tier just because of how popular the low 7.0 range is in RB. Now specific to the D model, the daily slash special task named Fire Arrows that requires the air-to-air -air rocket victories will be extremely easy. Owning the F-89D almost pays for itself by being able to do that task alone. Unfortunately, that task is not all too common, but when you get it, the F-89D is almost a one or two match max sort of plane in order to get that done. Also, finally, they are fairly durable planes versus enemy weapons, though as mentioned before, they can fly a little fast, which they are not durable against speed. Now with all those strengths, we have to also get to the weaknesses as well. So as mentioned numerous times before, the speed on these planes can get so high that the wings snap from mildly aggressive flying. The speed attained in this plane can get to near saber levels, but without the same wing strength. Additionally, the speed in a dive can get so intense that if your wings don't break, your control surfaces will cease to work, which will lead to a rendezvous with the ground. The tail section, along with the placement of both the horizontal and vertical stabilizers, makes this plane very stiff with yaw and also combined vertical slash horizontal movement, which can make it difficult to aim, especially in a snap. While the D model arguably has a better armament, it can also be very difficult to use, especially in a turning fight. Now, they're also not the most agile planes. Turning radius is outclassed by lighter planes and, as mentioned before, the MiG can easily outturn this plane and destroy you. Though it was worse in the past, there are still few vehicles in-game that are more maligned than this plane, among both allies and enemies alike. Though vehicles like the Harrier GR-1 have taken some of the focus away from the F-89, allies will still team kill F-89s while taking off from the runway on a semi-regular basis. Also, enemies will sometimes specifically target you, which can make it difficult to do anything in some matches. And while allies do not typically kill the F-89 anymore, it was really done, once the vehicle first came out and for quite a while afterwards, it will still occasionally happen, maybe once every 10 to 20 matches. And finally, if you couldn't tell by now, the F-89 both variants are absolutely huge. Their wingspans are nearly 60 feet, whereas for example, the P-80 is less than 40 feet. So this is around 50% wider in terms of wingspan than another very popular American fighter, which will make you very easy to hit, especially in a turning fight. 
And now with all of that out of the way, let's get into my final recommendation of if you should purchase one or both these planes. Though the F-89 is not quite as OP in my opinion as it was when it was first released, largely due to being overshadowed by newer planes that people have taken issue with, and the fact that people have figured out how to beat the F-89, it is still an excellent plane when regarding its role. This said, the BF-109A for example, of which sits at 1.3 BR, is also an excellent plane while costing a small fraction of the price. So aside from helping the grind at a relatively high PR, what makes the F-89s a worthwhile venture to spend over 11,000 GE on without a sale, which is equivalent to around $56 USD for the two of them, or just over 7,500 GE for the F-89B alone? Well, this plane was coincidentally added when the F-4C was added to the game, so it's not like it was ever all too close to being a top tier plane. So it's not like the F-86 Skyblazer, for example, that used to be top or near top tier and is now classed by, outclassed by many other planes that were added later. The F-89 will be a niche plane that, unless you find out that this is your favorite BR in which to play, will essentially exist for two purposes for you. To either help you grind through that BR bracket or for you to troll mid 7.0 BR matches with one or both of the F-89 variants. It does both of these things exceedingly well. I can tell you that compared to my most used plane, the F-4E Phantom II, I have hardly used the F-89 because by the time that I purchased it, both models were on sale and I already unlocked all planes in the American tech tree. So it was more of a vanity purchase plus something I could make a video on. They were, even in that regard, worth it, but only on a sale for me, being that these were simply only to have fun with and not to help me with a grind. Now, if you've already progressed to the top tier of the American tech tree, like I did, then I would only purchase one or both of these planes while they're on sale. If you love air-to-air -air combat, or are around this BR, or just want to fly a plane in this BR, they are excellent purchases, whether you buy one or both. I personally find that even with the recent up tiers, at least in the Air AB, the A2D1 as opposed to the F89 is still the plane that I would go to for the grind, but the F89s are not far behind. So my final recommendation, if you're beyond 9.0 BR with the Americans, but enjoy air-to-air -air combat, purchase one or both of the F-89s while they're on sale. Both of them really because of the amazingly fun rockets on the D model that can also make going through special tasks a breeze. If you're at the BR in which these planes sit, or are just looking for planes around this BR, I would definitely purchase them but would recommend a sale unless you have the extra money. It's not that they're not worth purchasing outside of a sale, it's just that I'm cheap and always looking to buy vehicles that are on sale. If you have to decide whether to purchase just one or both, take heart in the fact that the B variant is likely the better variant, although it is a little bit less of a troll plane. I prefer the B variant, however, because it feels like more of a traditional plane. This said, these are both great planes, and while they can be tricky to fly due to the massive tail, are easily a solid 8.0 or 8.5 out of 10. Would recommend, would buy. That all said, thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below because comments, likes, and even subscriptions are massively important for the YouTube algorithm. Either way, thank you again all so much and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care everyone.